Hey everyone, your designers are here. I'm Anita at Cedar Hill Farmhouse. And I'm Yvonne at Stone Gable. And I'm Kelly at My Soulful Home. We have tips and tricks and decorating advice for you today. So let's get started. This is episode 199, Decorating Tips We Learn from Blogging. And the show notes for today's episode can be found at decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash 199. This is such a fun episode because I have learned so much from blogging and I know you two have too. Mm -hmm. We have. All about decorating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we have something so exciting on the horizon for all of you, our listeners and also our readers. And we have been working like little elves in the background um, <laughs> when we're not talking to each other and podcasting and, and reading your emails and doing all of that. We're putting together something that we think is going to be super special and that you guys are going to love a lot. So we have, we are we have come together, and I'm not trying to be coy or mysterious, but you know, you don't want to say exactly what it is until you've sort of really got it all together. But we're confident enough uh, that it's going to be super soon, so we can tell you that there's something really exciting because oh, we're busting at the seams. And this is something I'm a little a little uh, tip. There is it's something that people have been asking for. Yes. Give the people what they want. And the three of us have banded together. So that you have, um, we, we are a force to be reckoned with. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I really think we have it pretty much together. We've been doing a lot of working and talking and, and should I say designing and things. So we're so, so excited uh, that something is right on the horizon and we'll tell you more about it. Yeah, yeah. So definitely stay tuned. Um, you know, keep your dials here and watch out on our blogs. But you know, you're our listeners, and we love to whisper in your ear all the time. So we'll probably be telling you guys here first. <laughs> so listen in, and in the next few weeks, uh, we are going to be able to officially announce uh, our newest venture. So super excited, and you know, just like you want to share with your your best friends what's going on with you guys. We wanted to share with you guys because we couldn't hold it in anymore. Yeah, we're over the moon about this and we think you'll really love it. And we've created what we've done and we've created with you in mind. Yeah. So that's all we're going to tell, right? Yes. (laughs) Yeah. It's For so today. hard to keep the secret when it's so close. Yeah, we better stop talking about that. I know. I know. 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 We're going to blab it, so. Okay, so on to decor tips that we have learned from blogging. Now there's, what do we have? Aggregate, um, F- five, seven, oh, and ten? Yeah. Nine. Mm-hmm. Nine. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's 14. And then we add another wow. seven. Wow. Wow. So we are um, aggregate of drinking age as blo- <laughs> <laughs> the collective blogging years mm-hmm. and in every state in the union. And uh, with uh, 21 years of blogging altogether, we have learned a heck of a lot. Do you know, I think I learned more about decorating and decor and elements and the el- the the rules of decor from the years I've blogged than all the years um, before that. And I was a decorator. I love to decorate. I helped other people decorate. But I think once I think really once you get behind that camera and you have an audience, you just want to learn. I just want to learn so much, put it into practice and give my best to the audience that I have. So I I really have learned so much in almost nine years of blogging uh, about how to decorate. I, for myself, I think what really is the overall umbrella decor tip or decorating tip that I could pass along is that in blogging, I have taken more risks because, you know, it can, on a very base level, it's like, you just can't be keep doing the same thing over and over again. Like, (laughs) there's my chair again. I'm going to show you my chair one more time, right? So you have to keep trying new things. And so it makes you go a little bit out of your comfort zone even sometimes or stretch something a little bit or, you know, think about it enough where 
um, you have a, a solution, whereas maybe if you didn't have to take a picture of it or you didn't have to share it, you'd be like, yeah, that's good enough. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> you know, but because it doesn't look of, that bad. Yeah, I mean, like, it's like, OK, and I already paid for it, so I'm not going to get another thing. So for me, I think the fact that we are doing it on a constant basis, like anything, you know, you get better at it as you do it. But but also because you're doing it a lot. Uh, you need to take risks and and push it a little bit. And that makes you better. Sometimes those risks pay off and it, you're like, wow, that looks so, so, so much better. And sometimes, you know, it's the failure that you don't take the picture of. But as in life, many times you learn more from that than you do when it's perfect. Can I so, step in there for just a second, Kelly? Yeah. I And that's one of my biggest takeaways. I think I have made so many decorating mistakes and I'm I'm like you. I take a risk. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I'm surprised when it works or doesn't. But I think that I really learned that mistakes are part of the process and are a learning experience, just like it's no different than life. You know, you're going to make mistakes in life. You're going to make mistakes in decorating. But instead of letting that get you stuck or frustrated or I'm not going to do this anymore, you know, as bloggers, if you want to keep your blog up or if, as a podcaster, you want to have something to talk about, you've got to get over that hump yes. and, you know, and learn how to, and learn from it. And, you know, we, two of us have Pepto, have had Pepto-Bismol pink walls and, you know, <laughs> cry. Two and, of you have been Tuscan. Two of us had Tuscan. Yeah, and one yeah, of us right. have been optuminal. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I think mistakes are part of the process. And I think that, you know, people want to decorate and especially home decor enthusiasts, they'd like to put their personality into it. You don't want to go into a store and have the store brought home to you because that's not who you are. But just know that you're going to make mistakes and mistakes are just part of it. Right. So Kelly, Actually, I agree with you. Step out there, make those mistakes, learn and move on. Right. So before I was a blogger, I taught a lot of classes and I developed a lot of yawn, yawn, statistics classes. Okay. <laughs> Let's Sign talk about me that. up, baby. Yeah, no, I know. Like you're ready. Statistics <laughs> class. Hey, they said they were fun when I taught them. Oh, <laughs> well, that I was, think, uh, yeah. Oh. If anyone could make statistics mm-hmm. fun. You could. Okay. Could it be about so, decorating though, Anita? Anita, in my graduate work, I had to take a st- st- statistics class. Yes, yeah, see, it's only, hard to say too. I know. It's the only grade in college or in um, my master's work. I got a C. Oh, yeah. And it's hard to get a C in, in, in creative. Yeah. Well, see, that's, that (laughs) was my problem. (laughs) Yeah. So the point of this is, uh, so I worked with an instructional designer and I learned so much about how people learn. And one of the important things is to put a really well made course together where people actually learn, you have to have examples and you have to have non-examples. People need to see what it looks like when it's done incorrectly. So that is why it's not just that mistakes are okay and they're just part of the process. They are a vital part of the process. That is where the learning takes place. And many times the non-examples are more important than the examples. And, you know, the other thing I learned from doing these classes is something that has stayed with me these many years later is you can learn, you can teach yourself almost anything with two pieces of information. You need to know when you've messed up and you need to know how to fix it. So here's the beauty of it. When you're doing something, try different things. It's okay if it doesn't look good because what you're going to do is whatever you do, just try different things, make mistakes, try some pillows. Even if they don't work, take the picture of them, look at the picture. You can kind of go, why didn't this work? Or why do you think it might not have worked? And then try it with a different pillow or try it with a different bedspread. I mean, just kind of rotate things in your house. You are going to learn so much by doing this. Take the picture each time. Make notes, at least mental notes, of what, why things worked, why they didn't. Buy a bunch of pillows from the store. Try different combinations. You're going to take pictures of all of them. You are going to learn so much from doing that. I mean, you really do learn by doing. Anita, you said the P word. And I think that's something that we'll let you talk about that. Pictures. She said the P word? I missed that. Picture. <laughs> what? What word was that? Oh, 
<laughs> pictures. I was like, oh, did I doze off for a second? Because I was like, <laughs> no, I'm like, what picture. Pictures. Yeah, right. The, the and we'll let Anita continue to talk about that because she's the one that, you know, it first brought this up. And if I think. Yeah, that's the that tip of is, the century. Yeah, that really is. Go ahead, Anita. Ding, right. Ding, it's, ding, so ding, the, ding, the thing ding. I learned too. Yes. Oh, oh, I get. Oh, no, no. The, yeah, no, you can have it. No, it's that's just, yeah. a, it's just an acknowledgement of the tip of the century. Thank you. Well, it's. um You've got to photograph your room when you do it right, when you do it wrong. Take constant pictures of your room. Take before pictures, take after pictures. That is how you're going to really tell whether your room is working or not. Because sometimes it looks like it's working or something you think, ah, it doesn't look that bad. You take the picture and the picture, it's really hard to look at a picture and lie to yourself. Absolutely. And here's the other thing. Save your pictures Put them in a file folder, do you know, on, on your computer, because you can really see how much you progressed. When I look at some of the yes. first things I did blogging, I'm thinking, oh gosh, it surprises me that anyone even came to my blog. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right, but, that's right. So it's fun to have not only just different when you try different things, but you definitely want the first thing, like just start now. Just go take pictures of all your rooms today, so you have a mm-hmm. starting point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, baseline. You really, mm-hmm. yeah, your baseline, and you can really see how you've improved over time. I yeah. Think- so, you know, these decor tips we have learned from blogging, but they're, they are tips that now you can incorporate and you don't have to be, you know, a blogger busting your mistakes. butt to be a blogger. <laughs> for all those years, yes. right? You don't need to have 21 years of blogging behind you. You've got us. So we're saying sort of take a risk, you know, put yourself out there, push the envelope a little bit. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of mistakes take the photos. And then I think then what develops from a lot of those three things and some other things that go on when you keep trying and you do something all the time, you know, you obviously start to get better at it, but then you, these formulas seem to sort of bubble to the top. You know, there's now, you know, oh, okay. I know how to put pillows on my sofa. Um, I know how to To create a vignette. Yeah. To create Uh a vignette to set a table. So it just gets easier and easier because you have found, well, while there is obviously um, sort of step-by-step instructions for all of these things, each home is different. Each table is a different shape. Each right. you know room gets different lighting. Each couch is shaped a little bit differently. So it can take different size pillows and all that. You can particularize it to your home and develop these little formulas. So bam, you know, yes. if you were the person uh, in episode a few episodes ago where we said somebody's coming in 20 minutes, <laughs> in 20 minutes, you could have, you know, a table set of vignette made and the pillows all right on your couch because you do it Easy. all the time. And, and time to put on your lipstick. Yeah. Here and here's what I also I'm going to piggyback off of everything we've just said. This is just I mean this is like gold. I think that we should um, somehow immortalize. We should start this a podcast. Episode. Because yes, <laughs> we should tape this because yeah, it's so should. good. But this is here's what's going to happen. You will develop an eye for what works. Yes. And I think everybody's eyes a little different yes. because you have different a keen styles. Eye. And, and I think. I mean, I've always been creative, but I've been inspired and creative by so many people. It's like a snowball. And also with a decor eye, you will learn just, and it becomes just like intuitive Mm -hmm. what works and what works. Here's the key for you. Yes. Yes. Because what works for me is really not, is different than what works for Anita. And what works for Anita is different than what works for Kelly. But we, by... um, learning and practicing and doing and um, trying to make our, our homes welcoming and beautiful, we've actually developed an eye for design that works for us. And I think that is such an important thing to try to achieve. I was just on, um, actually, I'll, I'll give a plug. I was just on the Ballard website. They have beautiful, they show beautiful rooms on there. And I'm just so taken with them. Uh, A lot of, it has like a European feel and they're not afraid of color. And I just look over their room and think, what about this room is so appealing to me? And, you know, I learn from looking, but I learn even more from doing. So don't be afraid to keep doing and, and decorating and moving and changing and getting out there so you can develop that eye for what works. Yes. So while you're developing this eye for what's working and not working, here is something I learned from blogging. 
you are going to see from the photos, from the analyzing your rooms, you're going to see some things that don't work. But sometimes you don't want to get rid of that thing. But if it's not working, my tip is get rid of it. That's what I learned. If it's not oh. working, you've got to get rid of it. Would you move it to another room though? Well, if it works in another room, but if Use it that. doesn't work in any of your rooms, you're, it needs to exit the house yeah. through the okay. door. Here's a little even though it even it might be really hard and you have yeah. to cut it in half. Well, that's half. what I'm saying. <laughs> like, like, like yours. I had to cut in half the um albatross altar that was left in my oh, and it wasn't, yes. you know, it was not a real altar, but that's what my nickname for it was. Yes, we literally had to cut it in half to but get it. But it was out. so beautiful, it was hard for you to want to get it. It was hard it. for me. So I but tried and tried and tried. Mm-hmm. But that's what we're saying. Work. It could be a beautiful piece that just for whatever reason does not work in your house. Or maybe you just don't like it. But here's what happens. You paid a lot of money for it and you just can't let it go. That's what I call mm-hmm. being held hostage mm-hmm. by your furniture. Yeah. And that's don't. such Nobody a good that. point. And yeah. that goes along with here's another something very big I learned from blogging. Edit, edit, edit. You want to hone your style. You want to curate your style. That's just a a really cool way of saying to edit, 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 and hone your style. (laughs) Right, Um, right. And so I think we're saying the same thing. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. I think that it's very important to edit, 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 because most people have too much stuff in one room. Like I have too much stuff in one room now and I'm trying to figure out what, how to do it. But, but then, you know, sell it, give it to your children, give it to your parents, give it to to a a friend, friend. give it to someone who needs something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I just sell it and sign it. I had, you know, and, and because my, all of these things that we're talking about today, also will lead you to your own style. The word is starting to come out as we get deeper into this conversation. Um, But everyone asks about that. How do I find my style? I don't know if the style I have is my style. But Well, but you do all these things. The outcome will also be that you find your style because the decor tips we learned from blogging is what got us to our unique styles. Each one of us Mm -hmm, has a very mm -hmm. unique style. And that's what brings people to our blogs. And a lot of you lovely ladies and men and people are crossovers, but you might have started out at one of the other blog, you know, in Adidas or Yvonne's or mine or something like that. We each have a very distinct style. I believe if I, I see a photo and I don't need to know that it is Stone Gables. I don't need to read it on there. I know. Same I thing agree. with Anita. And well, I'm I, the same I way venture with you to girls. say, I mm-hmm. hope people find that with mine. Mm-hmm. That's what's going to happen to you too. If you start doing this on a regular basis, you take the risks, you, you're you not afraid of mistakes, you take the photos, you edit it, you hone it, you curate it, bam, you've got your style. Mm-hmm. And you know, and here's the, and you'll have it confidently. Yes. And that is, I mean, that doesn't mean I'm changing all the time. My, uh, but my style I have right now is a confident style. I'm replacing something in my dining room that I'm like sick over replacing it. But I really think another piece would work better as I hone my style. Yes. And I'm trying to fit, you know, that, that buffet that I painted that's going the one in the dining room. Oh, oh it's going. It's I going. know it's so sad. Really? I know what, what's going but it in must its place. Go. Uh, yes, it I'm must putting go. another buffet with a glass, whole, a beautiful glass front, glass sides that I can put like white dishes in. Oh. I just it's it's gonna it's going to be more practical. But I am trying to find a place for that buffet in my house because I it's just a beautiful. It's a yeah. Beautiful I think piece. It, well that I think is. You're but you know what? For I don't have any place for it. I really don't. Well, don't get rid of it straight away. Just keep it for oh. a while. <laughs> I'm going to ask. I'm, I'm, gonna gonna ask, ask I'm trying to twitch. Let me wait. Let me see. I can just get in the car. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Go ahead. Clean out your closet. Then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. 
Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. I just recently did something where, and I have read this in many emails that I have received, we have received from Decorating Tips and Tricks. Can you help me with this area? I like it, but there's something, something wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, oh. it just doesn't feel right. Mm-hmm. And I was feeling about this area in my kitchen. It had all these elements I loved. A a beat-up bistro chair, you know, French one, chippy, great. Uh, A um, birdcage that I have dragged back from an antique store in Atlanta. And it had um, a a plant and it had a few other things. And and I said, you know, in a vacuum, this is great. You know, it's got all these elements that I love. But every time I looked at it, it was like, somehow it's just not working in my kitchen. Like, it just seems like, it almost seemed too much like a store set up. Like, I was Mm. trying too hard and it was not a functioning space. And all of a sudden, like, you know, what do they say? Palm to forehead. I was like, Mm -hmm. why don't I put a comfortable chair there? It was right after our unkitchen kitchen episode that I had this moment. And I ordered this terrific chair from Target. That I love. And it has changed the space so dramatically. I My kids sit on it. My dogs are sitting on it. It's I, I'm drawn to it. It's not so uh, visually stimulating as all the other stuff, which was just too much. Oh, mm-hmm. And it goes with where I'm at right now in my style and the rest of the house. It just seemed too sort of like farmhouse cluttered in that one area. And wow. But, you know... On its own, everything that was in that corner seemed perfect for my house, but it just wasn't working. So when it's just not working for you, keep working at it. Take a picture. Take a picture. Take the stuff away. Mm -hmm. Clear it out and then maybe rethink the space if you can't think of right away what should go there. Well, here I've got another thing that I learned from blogging and this is I learned how to create a vignette. And I think that was so life-changing for me. You know, I was doing it all along, you know, um, styling, but I didn't, I didn't really know what it was and the elements. And, you know, the more I read about it, the more I practiced, the more I did it, it was like, oh, these things really work. And they add so much to a room. They add so much of your personality. And for me, Two things, I learned how to arrange pillows and mix patterns and also create a vignette. Huge, 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 huge. So I've got so many 
blog posts about vignettes and how to create them and their elements. So I'll put some of those in the show notes because I think if somebody masters that in their own style, you end up with such a decor pop and wow in a room because of that. Well, adding to what you were saying, because I so agree with you and I wanted to talk a minute about the pillow thing. Because one of the things I learned from blogging is if you want to change up a room, one of the cheapest and easiest ways to do it is to change out the pillows and throws. It can make such a huge difference in a room and you're not buying a new sofa. You're not buying a new chair. It's so much less expensive. In fact, I mean, let's go one step further and say, buy some nice pillows like you like, like I love the down pillows, just buy the pillows in the size you like, and then buy slip, buy covers for those pillows that you can change out. And then you just don't have to keep replacing those pillows all the time. Anita, that's such a, oh, you know, talk, you're talking to the pillow queen. Absolutely. And here's a wonderful tip. I got one from one of my readers talking and they were saying, you know, how much they enjoyed our podcast. And I'm so sorry that I don't know your name, but if you're listening, you know who you are. They go to Goodwill and they said that you can't believe how many down filled pillows there are that have beautiful down inserts and they take them home and they wash them and they dry them the right way. And they've got these gorgeous down inserts for just a couple dollars. Oh, I thought that was brilliant. Now they throw the pillow cover away, but they have these wonderful, oh, isn't that the greatest idea? Yeah. that's So thank you. Yeah. For a budget conscious Mm -hmm. uh, tip. I think that's fantastic. And here's something else. I've done, if a chair is really ugly, let's just call it, if it's <laughs> really it ugly, oh, poor if chair. it's ugly, but <laughs> I mean, you know, well, maybe yeah, I've had some ugly chairs. I'm not going to lie. So, but let's say you're in a situation where you're, I can't replace the chair. I'm stuck with it for whatever reason. Here's a couple and you can't afford to get it slip covered because that's another great option, but it does, you know, require some expense there. Here's something you could do just as a stop gap. And one thing I've done, if the chair is small enough, you can throw a throw over it and It'll, you know, I have a really small slipper chair that doesn't have arms and I just put a throw over it and it completely transformed the chair. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'll show it. I'll do a a link to it. A A throw over the chair and it completely covered it. So a throw covers a multitude of sins. That's a really good, important thing. But you you design the, I mean, not design Mm -hmm. the throw, but you artfully toss the, mm -hmm. it's not like you covered it, like I covered a sheet over it. You put the throw on it. No, no, no. I kind of tucked it in. I kind of tucked it in so that it kind of looks like it went on it. But if you had a bigger chair, depending on the chair, it's not going to work in every situation, but you could put a sheet over it, a nice linen sheet or a linen piece of fabric you could put over it. Depending, again, it just depends on the size and you could tuck it artfully, but it, right, so that it looks like it's kind of meant to be there. And it, again, it's not going to work in all situations, but I'm telling you, if you're desperate, give it a try. Well, oh, yeah. I, I had a friend who did that. She was very shabby chic, but she bought some vintage linens like you love, Anita, and oh. she threw them over uh, an old uh, pullout love seat that she had and you would never know that it was really it was truly an ugly love seat underneath but you would never know i haven't oh go ahead i have another thing i learned from blogging and i've written a post about it and that is make your bed every day yes because your bed is such a focal point and it's the biggest thing in your room and if you don't make it take a picture of your bed made in your bedroom and your bed unmade in your bedroom and that's brutal Oh, it is, it'll make you, it'll make you want to make your bed every day. But, and I just want to tuck, I have a, I have a bunch of them listed here. I've learned so much, but listen, I want to say that if you love to decorate, you're never done. That's true. I mean, we just might as well say that what we learned. That's what we learned. Well, you're never, you know you're never That's like done. That's saying to, you know, anyone who loves like uh, to a painter, like, okay, Rembrandt, we think you're done now, you yes. know, like, yes. okay, you know, Monet, you're done. You're but not I've done. Heard, it's creative, right? Yeah, so I've you're heard, always going to be doing it. I've heard so many people say, well, once I, once I get this in the room, it'll be done for now. Maybe like I just bought four beautiful chair, well, Wayfair chairs um, for my dining room. And I'm going to post that this week. And guess what? I thought, well, 
this looks, this looks like a finished room to me. Like it really is my style now until I decided, oh, well, maybe I will replace that buffet because they had a buffet I've eyed for like a year on a major sale on Jossin, Maine. So I thought, oh, I'm going to bite the bullet and just do it. Now, if I don't like it, I'll, I guess I'll return it. It won't be easy, but I will. But you're never done. So then when I get that, I'm sure there's something else along the way that'll strike me and go, oh, well, how about this? Or how about that? Do you know what I'm saying? You are never done. Well, the wonderful thing about enjoying decorating as we do and as our listeners do is that it's a very useful creative outlet. You're creating a beautiful home for yourself and your family, and you get to live in it every day. It's not as if you create something and then it gets put on a shelf or you you create something and it's in an art gallery. All of that, of course, is wonderful uses of creative talent. <laughs> but, but they this, should be. Yeah, but <laughs> it this should is be in so an art gallery. <laughs> useful, you know, mm-hmm. and I feel that way about cooking too. Um, you know, it's a useful thing to really be interested in preparing wonderful food because you have to eat anyway. So it might as well be great. I mean, you have to live anyway in some sort of shelter. It might as well be absolutely beautiful. So I think it's great that it's never done because it allows you to stretch your creativity and keep it going. And at the same time, making a sanctuary for yourself. And here, but here's what we're not saying that you're, you should buy, 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 buy constantly. No, buying. that's not now, what it's about. We, we do. I mean, I buy more than I thought I'd ever would because I want to give my readers different options and I do this for a living. And, you know, some companies are so nice to send me things so I can, so like you said, Kelly, we don't show the same thing. But here's what we're saying. Change things up. Create a new vignette. Um, put in, put a pillow, make a pillow and put it on that um, side chair in your dining room or whatever. You know, go to a vintage store. I got, I got chamber pots to hang. I have a, a big gilded mirror and I put uh, chippy shutters that I got at a vintage place. And I was looking for chamber pot lids because they're so interesting to hang. One of my readers had a fit that I use chamber pot lids on the wall, but they were so pretty and they were so inexpensive because the the bottom part of the chamber pot had been broken. Mm -hmm. So we're not saying bye, 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 bye. We're saying be creative, think about things, use those creative juices. Yeah, it's much more creative to Mm -hmm. figure it out or move it around like Anita is such an advocate of than just, you know, going and buying something. Of course, sometimes you want to buy something like I just bought this chair, but I mean, I have to tell you guys, it was such a deal from Target. But uh, (laughs) And it's a beautiful chair. I can't believe how comfy and beautiful it is. But yes, this is not, you know, not license. We don't need to give you license, but it's also not any encouragement to run out with your credit card, you know, in your hand. Just be creative within, repurpose, move around. And if you're buying something, be mindful about what you're buying and buy something that you really love. That's what we're saying. That's right. We had talked about saving for that splurge. Saving for that investment piece, you know, that fits into your budget. And I know that Kelly, you said this, it really struck me that, uh, you know, you, I mean, we have a lawn care service, so we don't get weeds and, you know, it's quite costly every year. And um, isn't my home just as important that I have maybe a budget for that, for the things that I are worn out or old or really need to be replaced. So I think those are the kind of things that we learn and you have to think about. Inevitably, with the new year come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to DoseDaily.com. 
co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co dot co slash DTT and use the code DTT. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. I have something for you all to learn. What? Our tip of the day. <laughs> It's from Jacqueline P. Jackie. Jackie has directing this tick, tip in particular to Yvonne, but it, okay. everyone can use it. And she says, yes, Yvonne, you can change the hinges and you do not have to remove the doors. Remember we were talking about whether what? or not you should make the effort to take your doors off and put mm-hmm. the matching yes. finish yes. hinges? Oh. Okay. So Jackie says, Remove the center hinge and replace it. Then do the top and then the bottom. And you don't have to take the door off to do this. Just don't over or under tighten it as you're going along. And do you know what? She has done this and replaced all the hinges on her doors, her interior doors, while drinking her coffee and listening to DTT. She was doing this before this came up. Isn't that funny? And she was like, oh my goodness, I have to share this. So Jackie and I, my BFF Jackie and I, we're going to be um, doing all the hinges. Yes. Okay, Jackie. We actually got three other emails about your hinges. People were really... Really excited about helping you with that. So as we go along in the are next they few, coming out? Maybe they're coming over. Well, mom. you know, I even considered <laughs> what are you using serving? like that rub and buff, but I wouldn't paint it because I know that I haven't had a success with painting. But mm, that rub and buff. Well, just so t- t- just uh, hang on there, little Missy. There might be another <laughs> tip coming your way. I'm going to give this tip to Bobby, and <laughs> we'll you will find us at our um, hardware store this weekend. Pass on, it along to Bobby. Yes, yes. But that we, is so smart. I mean. You know, yeah. sure. I mean, you know, you would just think, take all the hinges off, Brilliant. take the door off, put the hinges on, put the door back on. But yeah, hello. Thank you, Brilliant. Jackie. Thank you so, so, so much. Really great. Well, I thought today was terrific. I, you know, it, it gave me an opportunity to reflect back on things that I have learned during, you know, specifically from blogging. And, you know, I... We had some overlap, and then I've now had the opportunity to learn some things that you guys have learned from blogging that maybe not maybe not had dawned on me. Kel- uh, Kelly, yeah, I know you're closing, but can I just say this one thing? You can say whatever you want. Okay, I here's here's another tip I learned from blogging. You never know where you're going to make your best friends, oh. and I mean it. I mean it. So, like, get out there and do fun things, and enjoy groups, and you know, join the golf club or the Mar- Mahjong club or become a blogger and email us and you know you can be a- our friend too but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, my, but you all are our friends yes yes but really um my my very best friends have come from blogging and it's so I mean we just like blow up our texts and calling and it's just so wonderful that we have such great friends too bad they just live so far away Oh, oh, that was so sweet. But it's so true. You just yeah. never know, you know, dive into life head first and you just don't know what's going to happen. That's right. Remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Hey, 
Hey, everybody. We want to thank you so much for listening to Decorating Tips and Tricks. And we want to make it even easier for you to listen. And it's easier if you subscribe. You just click the subscribe button on our website, www.decoratingtipsandtricks.com. Or you can subscribe through Apple Podcast or any of your favorite podcast listeners. When you subscribe, DTT comes free right to you three days a week. So until next time.